Hi everybody, welcome back. Listen, this is kind of a fun one today. I am going to teach you how to climb into a giant balloon safely. <laughs> this is a weird skill. I've been doing this for about 15 years. I've seen on the internet a bunch of people who are doing it in ways that really could hurt them. So I want to show you how to do this in a way so you won't get killed. So this is a creative life skill. Let's do it. Creative life skills will help you be creative if you do them. Um, creative life skills will make you a more interesting human. So many of you know me as a juggler and a magician, but also as a theater professor. And this is a skill that I learned for all of that. Uh, this is something that I teach students, but it's also something that I use for my own shows. And about 15 years ago, I got this book. It's by Larry Moss. It's called Climb Inside, and it's how to climb into a big giant balloon. And so I want to quickly go over the safety tips, and then I'm going to show you step by step exactly what it takes to climb into a big giant balloon, how to make it funny, uh, and how to, how to end with a big bang. Though a lot of magicians might be interested in doing this, uh, this is not a magic trick. You really are climbing into a big giant balloon. Uh, these are, uh, th and they come in different sizes. This one has a uh, five inch neck. So across from here to here, it's five inches. This one is a little newer to me. Uh, this one has a seven inch neck. These might be more common now. It should be said, <laughs> these are made out of latex, 100%. If you have a latex allergy, you can't do this trick because you're climbing into a big latex environment. They look like big whoopee cushions. Let me show you the, the steps that I use to prep the balloon. Okay, so let's start with the balloon that has the five inch nozzle. What I wanna do is I wanna cut this rim completely off. So here we go, I'm just cutting it off as straight as I possibly can, like so. Okay, so this opening of the balloon is now off. And uh, garbage, so you can toss that away. So then you are left with the balloon that just has an open mouth like that with no, no rim on it. This is enough for me and I'm, you know, a six foot one, 200 pound guy. This is enough for me to get in. Once this is all stretched out and there's plenty of uh, air inside the balloon, I can get in this. <laughs> this is gonna stretch enough for me to get in there. Okay, but we got these new ones. Uh, this one is got a, a wider, wider neck. I'm a fan, I've, be, I've become a fan of these. These are kind of cool, uh, but I did try taking off the, the rim of these things too. Now what that does is let's say I want to stick my head out of the balloon and look like a big giant tomato or whatever uh, and do a dance. This neck is, is, since it's so wide, too much air was rushing out of the balloon when I was doing that. I was losing, there was not enough seal around my neck. And so suddenly now I, was, I just had a big deflated balloon around my body uh, when I tried this. So here's what I do. I, I, uh, I still prep the balloon. I want a little bit more stretch. For me to, for me to get into this thing, I, still, uh, I would still like a little bit more space. What I do with these things for me is I cut a half inch, just a, a, like that, just a tiny little notch, you see, like so. And then I cut, I cut the rim, just like that. And I do that on both sides. So again here, just a little, you know, more, I need more than that. I'll cut about a half inch, you know, ish. Uh, and then I cut the rim. So now I have this kind of situation. This allows me to get a little bit more stretch out of the balloon. And then when I pop my head out of this, 
uh, it still creates a seal around my neck. It's a very comfortable seal, actually. Uh, it's it's not you know it's not going to choke. It's not super super ridiculously tight, uh, and um, and it keeps the air in the balloon, which is what you want. You want the air to stay in the balloon. So that's how I prep the balloons. Though you can maybe get one or two performances out of these, I would say strive for one. You're, you're never going to want to reinflate these because once they inflate, they end up just looking like big giant shriveled. They're, they're not as clean and nice looking as this. If you brought a big already inflated balloon onto the stage, it just looks like garbage. Uh, and yeah, maybe you could climb into it, but uh, the chances of it popping every subsequent time you get in there are, they, they are exponential. They just keep going up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, though each of these balloons is between twenty and thirty dollars a piece, that's good if you're a performer because that means not everybody's going to do this trick. That's if you're one of the few who actually goes on stage and does this, then then that makes you more unique. So uh, that's that's great for your performance. But once you're in there, uh, you want to be assured that you've got plenty of air. You've got about thirty minutes of air if you're not moving. Now, if you are moving a lot and you're dancing and doing all this other stuff in there, then, you know, let's say you've got 15 minutes of air. That's still plenty. I am never, I never have my head inside of this balloon longer than a minute. And then at the end, I pop the balloon. Okay, so we're almost there. Then, what I also do is I warm the balloons up with a hair dryer. I'll go into a little bit more detail about that when I actually show you how to climb into the balloon. But the other thing you need is a leaf blower. This is an old one. You could probably find a battery operated one that is so cool. You, you know, this, this is just one that I've had for a really, really long time. You want to use an electrical blower. Do not ever use a gas blower, because guess what? <laughs> You're going to be filling the balloon with carbon monoxide gas fumes, and that's the worst possible scenario. You don't want to fill that balloon with anything but air. So just, you know, an electric leaf blower and you're golden. Whenever I get into a balloon, I also have a knife. This is the knife that I use. It's thin uh, and it is a utility knife. It's just a basic utility knife that can go in my pocket. I have that in my right hand pocket. Again, too, I'm right handed, so I want to make sure that I've got easy access to that. Or uh, I might have it in this pocket. Either way, I can, I can get to it really quickly with my left hand or with my right hand. I'm generally using my left hand to hold the nozzle shut, to hold that stem. Uh, and I'll show you exactly what I mean with that. But so you want this always. You always want something in case the worst thing would happen and air escapes and you're still in the balloon and now you don't have very much air left. You want to quickly be able to get to something that will pop the balloon. Okay, is that everything? I think that's everything. Is that everything? I think it is. Okay, let's go try it. So generally, I make this part of my performance is I have an old hair dryer and I heat the balloon up with the hair dryer, and I just do that right on stage. Now you could do this off stage. Uh, what uh, has been recommended sometimes is that you could just put this in a laundry dryer. You you take the balloon and you put it into a pillowcase, and just let it tumble, you know, for five minutes uh, in in the dryer. For me, this works great. For some of these newer balloons, the, the rubber is, and if you've got a new balloon, if, it's, if it hasn't been sitting for years or whatever, uh, these probably don't even need that much heating up. But in my experience, if you heat the balloon up, uh, it, will, it is less likely to pop. And at 21 to $30 a balloon, you don't want it to pop until you pop it. <laughs> so I am going to quickly just warm up the balloon with the hairdryer. I usually will just... <laughs> These balloons have a seam. You can see that the seam basically does a equator all the way around the balloon. It's the perimeter. Uh, 
you want that to be vertical because then you can get a better gauge on how high the balloon is going to be. These, these are supposed to be six foot diameter balloons, but the measurement of that is from seam to seam, from this seam to this seam, okay? So when you're blowing this th thing up to be 72 inches, six feet tall, uh, you want it to be, the, the seam to be vertical so that you can measure it by your height. However tall you are, that's how you can gauge how high you're filling the balloon. It's much less accurate if you're inflating the balloon this way. So you always want to inflate the balloon this way. Uh, I usually just have some kind of blanket. It doesn't have to be a big rug. All my balloon apparatus stuff I keep in a duffel bag. So a big rug like this isn't necessary, but if you're doing a stage show, you have access to a rug like this, then perfect. It's great to do this on a carpet. And stocking feet. I took my shoes off. I uh, just want to make sure that uh, there's nothing that's going to catch on the, the rubber. You don't want to pop this before it should pop. Uh, so take your shoes off. Blowing the balloon up is actually one of the most suspenseful parts for an audience member. Uh, they, they think this thing might pop at any time and it gets bigger and bigger. And once this becomes like a six foot diameter balloon, all of them are like kind of on edge. Uh, sometimes what I will do is I will take the balloon and I will swing it out over the front seats <laughs> and it, it always gets a reaction. People are like, oh, you know, is the thing going to pop? They don't expect you to climb into the balloon. They just see this big giant balloon swinging over their heads. And, uh, and so that, that's the most suspenseful part of, of the trick, really. It's, it, it fills them with awe and wonder when you actually then do climb inside the balloon. But I say, once you're blowing up the balloon, make, a, make it fun. Make it fun for the audience. They like this part. Okay, here we go. Okay, so when I'm blowing up the balloon, again too, I wanna to make sure that it's situated so that the seam is vertical and maybe I need to fold this rim over so I've got a good seal around the neck of the blower. Here we go. I can feel that it's on the floor. So now I can actually see that it's growing. I can gauge it against my height. Okay, so I grab it and then I get the blower out of the performance area. So basically off the rug. And now I'm gonna go into the balloon. I wanna make sure that it's, uh, it's vertical. So here we go, looks like that. Right arm first, head at the same time. And then you know what I do is I just put my, my left arm in so that it's going to be coming right around my torso. So here, here we go, all one fell swoop right up to the torso, it looks like this. Okay, so now it's around my torso. And then, you know, I might dance around, I might do some stuff like this, it's at my waist now. try and push my push it down to my waist okay so here here's what it looks like so now I'm down to my waist and now you can sort of see outside through the balloon a little bit but now I'm gonna try and push it all the way to the floor here we go okay So what, this is what it looks like when I first get in the balloon. This is like that and it's letting a lot of air out. So I want to grab that tightly and shut it. So then, okay. So here's what it looks like. I am in the balloon like so. Now I have to try to jump up 
This is going to seem really jiggly, so I apologize about that. But I'm just jumping up, and I try to move the nozzle upward. So here's my feet, and here's the nozzle. I want to get the. I want to try to get the nozzle all the way to the top, or real close. Okay, so now the nozzle is straight up, and I can now peek my head through the top. And now I can do all my dance moves. I can dance around. I can do all my funny business. I got a seal around my neck. I can't hear any air escaping, so I've got a good seal. And it's not too tight around my neck, so this is good. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna get my knife. And then I'm gonna come back in and I'll close up the nozzle. Now I have to pop the balloon. That's how I get out of here. And I have to do that by throwing the knife to the ground. So here's the knife. I'm just gonna throw it to the ground. This whole thing's gonna pop. So that's about it. Some people may want to try to end their act by climbing back out of the balloon, but uh, I got to agree with uh, Larry Moss who wrote the book. Uh, he says, why? And I think that's exactly right. Every time you're doing a show, uh, you want every trick that you do to you know, be better than the last. They already saw you get into the balloon. Why would they need to see you get out? It's sort of anticlimactic. Everybody knows what balloons do. What do they do? Why is it so unique and why is this popular? Because of the risk of popping. So then at the end, if you pop the balloon on purpose, then just sort of raise your hand and ta-da! And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an applause point. And then you take your bow. Make sure that your show builds. I think that's important. Okay, and then always gauge your safety. If it seems like your head is out of the balloon and too much air is rushing out, then don't go back into the balloon. Then climb out of the balloon or pop it with your, with your knife while your head is still out of the balloon. If you've lost a substantial amount of air, there is no point in bringing your head back into a balloon that is deflated too far. So you want to make sure that the balloon has plenty of air in it, your whole routine, and this actually makes for a bigger, louder, more splashy pop at the end when you pop the balloon. Uh, but safety first, you want to make sure that you're safe. To that end, you want your audience to also know that you're in control. If they feel like this is kind of dicey or that somehow you don't know what you're doing, nothing is worse for an audience. I've seen audiences suffer through worse, but you want always, even though you're doing a dangerous thing or a, seeming, a seemingly dangerous stunt, you never want your audience to feel like you're out of control. It's fine for them to think that you're doing something dangerous, but you never want them to think that you're out of control doing it. That isn't fair to your audience and it makes you look like a non-professional. <laughs> so make sure that you know what you're doing and then put your audience at ease that you look like you know what you're doing. So is it worth it to do this? Well, these balloons nowadays, you know, I don't know when you're watching this, but these cost about 25, 30 bucks. They've, they've gone up. So uh, is it worth it? My answer is, Yes, I get people who want this trick specifically. Uh, and though I'm getting older, I'm 55 now, I don't do this in my shows as much, I still do have people who will request it. They love it. Kids go bananas for this. And so certain gigs, I have to order like 10 of these balloons and just have them ready. Let's say I'm doing a, a day of 10 shows. I gotta have these things ready and I have, a, have to have them prepped. And, and, uh, and people just, they love it. They go crazy for this trick. It's really a great show ender. Uh, and so I'd say charge $30 more, put it in the fee, uh, and then do the trick. So I think it's worth it. It's a great trick to know, but you wanna make sure that the audience thinks you're doing it safely. You want them to have a good time, uh, especially if you're making this a funny bit, and it deserves to be a funny bit. This is weird, you know, it's a weird thing to do. You're climbing into a big giant balloon, and then you're turning on maybe some weird music, and then you're dancing. It's fun, it's really, really a fun thing. So is it worth it? Yeah, to me, 100%, it is. 
So I did recently teach a student how to climb into a giant balloon for a show that I was just directing a couple weeks ago. Uh, and if you'd like to see some raw footage of that, why don't you think about becoming a member to my channel? Uh, and there you can actually see the raw footage of me teaching her how to climb into the balloon for the fall show that we just did. Anyways, I think that's about it. I think I've covered everything that I need to cover how to make it fun and how to do it safely. Uh, anyways, uh, my name is Pete. You guys are watching It's a Creative Life. And until the next video, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.